Lucian. All right, so we have next our last panelist, Liqua. Liqua became involved with East Metro Youth Services Violence Intervention Program in June 2001 in a pre-employment program to gain some Canadian work experience as a Galway refugee climate. Liqua worked as worked as a staff in in the program for four years before, drawing on his business background and training. He helped establish the provincially funded Youth Outreach Worker Program in 2006, and has led responsibility for the Toronto East Quadrant uh, Youth Ontario network of 14 agencies. Liqua has served on the boards of Cultural Lake and the African Social Development Council. He has been a member of working groups consulting with the Ministry of Children and Youth Services on Youth and Gangs, Ontario Youth Action Plan, City of Toronto Youth Equity Strategy, and the Evaluation of Toronto Community Housing Program, as well as a member of the Research Action Team to develop stages of changes for the YOW program. Liqua believes in the power of engaging members of a given community to be the facilitators of change for themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Liqua. You'll have to excuse me, I have a very low voice, so I'll, I'll be using the mic a lot. Um, so my introduction to politics started in 1987. I was in grade five, and in the school that I went to, we had this concept of what we call monitors in the class. So these would be two individuals, I guess in today's lingo you'd call them the two snitches in the class, but um, our responsibility was whenever the teacher wasn't present, we had to make sure that everything happened the way it was supposed to go. This was a position of great responsibility and it was something which was quite desirable to have. And so I wanted this. I was the most intelligent person in the class, I was athletic, I did all these things, so I was convinced that I would be the person. It was my first election loss. I was made the vice monitor, and somebody else, just because there were more girls in class and he was better looking, got chosen as the monitor. And so I started to understand that sometimes in this thing which you know was politics, I didn't understand that that's what it was at the, at the time, but it, it is about getting people to like you and vote for you and, 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 and to get the thing that you want. So fast forward a few more years, and then it's 1995, I mean, what is um, Form 6, um, which would be the equivalent of 12th grade here? And in our high school, we had something called the, um, the Forum. And in the Forum, this was a place where all the seniors in our high school got to discuss grave matters that affected the 1,200 boys. I went to an all-boys boarding school. And you, you got to compete to be on the executive of the Sixth Form Forum when you were in what would have been grade 11. So the year before, you would have been eligible to join the forum. So as we were being prepared for this role, the senior guys came to us and, and they asked us, um, me and a group of my friends, they were like, who do you want to be the chair of the forum? So we were a little bit confused because our understanding was people voted for these positions. So it wasn't about what we wanted. There would be 1,200 other people who got to vote. And so we, we, we asked them this question, like, what do you mean, who do we want? Like, that's not how it works. This was our, our, our second introduction to how sometimes the election process can work with special interest groups. So the Sixth Form Forum guys were like, well, we're the people that count the ballots. So if you tell us what you want, we will give you the results that you need. And that's what happened. This time I was a bit more popular. So even though I didn't get enough votes, I was the chair of the forum. Fortunately, I didn't allow that to, to corrupt my, my thought process around how, how elections can happen and how true democracy is supposed to go. Um, in my country, if you've heard about Zimbabwe and things that have happened over the last few years, um, in 1999 to 2000, we went through a lot of um, potentially revolution, evolution type things that, that like Arjun was speaking about because we'd had the same government in power for the longest time and it had reached a point where they didn't really care about what the people wanted, they did what they felt was right. And so there was this um, theme in the air about voting for change. And this was my third lesson about politics because a bunch of us, because we were educated and well-read and we, we understood the issues, we all jumped on this vote for change bandwagon but we didn't recognize that the mobilization we did, it was sort of, and, and, and pardon me for saying this, sort of what we have in the room right now where you're preaching to the converted. 
You know, I'm, I like it when, when Laura talked about the percentages of, of young people who actually voted in the elections. I think you said two out of five. And yet in this room, we have, we have the people who normally vote in elections. So there was a bunch of us like this who thought we're voting for change and we've mobilized. But when the elections happened, everybody else who stays in the rural part of the country, which is 95% of the country, still voted for the same party. So we spent a couple of years doing stuff that ultimately wound up going for naught because we didn't mobilize properly. Fast forward again, 2001, I moved to Canada, I moved to Ontario. Now I need to be mindful how I say the next few things because I work for a community agency, so we have to be nonpartisan because we, we get off our funding from governments. So I won't use names, I won't use political parties, I'll let you figure it out, either you know or you will go and look it up later. 2001, I get to Ontario, and I swear, everywhere I went in Toronto on the social services field, people did not like the person who was the premier of the province. I didn't understand this. I would see posters in organizations about how bad this person was. And all I could think is, but isn't there democracy in this country? Like, don't people vote? And this is when I started to understand what it's like when you have a room of people who think the same, but don't take the time out to go in and show that to other people who may not be aware so that you can engage in that, in, in, you can engage in, in that change process that needs to happen at times. And so I use some of these lessons to figure out where do I fit into being a part of this political system, which is the way to get things moving in, in, any, in any environment or, um, or place that you may be. When you're under 30, you're considered to still be a young person. So in 2006, I was still technically a youth, barely. I think I was 28. Um, I was part of a meeting with our, our local member of parliament, our provincial parliament. And we were just talking about the issues that were happening in and around our work and in our particular community. And I will never forget what this woman said and did for me that day. Because she, she taught me something about how to tell the story if you're trying to get something to happen. We were approaching her because that's what you do. So for those who don't know, I mean, most of your writings, um, like the writing is where, where you live and the area that is covered by the, the politician who, who represents you in parliament. Um, most, most politicians have a day that they're available to their constituents. You know, I'm feeling like we maybe should have done a bit of education around some of the terminology. So we are the constituents, we live there, we work there. So the politicians have a day that they're available to meet with you to talk about writing issues. So we had gone to talk about the writing issue. We're out in Scarborough. Um, there was a lot of violence happening. This was after the summer of the gun. And we were speaking about a very local issue and what we thought we wanted to do to address this. And we had an idea. And she said to us, you know, you guys should remember that I'm not just the member of parliament for this area. I'm also the minister for the province. If you give me an idea that I can take to everybody else and it can be scaled up, then maybe we can do something. And that's how the Youth Outreach Worker Program was born. We gave them an idea, they built on it, and it became something that they're doing. And we're quite proud, um, some of the others who are in the room don't know, it's being expanded again across the province um, for the third time, I think, I think that's what's happening. And so we started to learn about what needs to happen to get involved. So when I look at all these lessons that I've had along the way, it has motivated me. I think I want to become the change that is needed. I look at what is wrong in our city, I look at what is wrong in our province, and I think that it is time for me to stand up and declare myself as a person who just got their Canadian citizenship, so I'm gonna vote for the first time in the elections that are happening um, um, in the years When it comes to voting, um, you know, when, when, when you're with your friends, Voting and, 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 and what your, your political preference is, is one of those really sensitive, touchy topics because, you know, there's times when you feel very strongly about something or someone, and other people have a particular reaction, which is sometimes very traumatic for them, maybe because of something that happened or what that person represents. So it's not something a lot of people really talk about in depth with each other. And that is something I really like to encourage you guys to do, especially as young people, because I think as has been said um, by, by both by Arjun and Laura, young people are very engaged in every other a a a sphere in life, except within the political process. 
So when Laura said um, it is time for us, um, that social pressure really works in terms of getting people motivated to vote, it actually got me thinking, wouldn't it be great if each of us leaving this room today tried to use some social media pressure to get engaged? Go and investigate who are the people that are running in your writing. I bet you they all have a Twitter account because they think Twitter is the new cool thing. For the three or four or five people that are running in your writing, tweet them all the same question and see who responds. That way they get to see each other and then you can start to put them on blast and start to ask them things that pertain to us as young people. And you know what, because it's in Twitter, they can't afford to say the wrong thing or ignore you because the media is watching and somebody's going to call them on that and ask them about those things. So I'm looking forward to the Q&A and, and, and the kinds of um, discussions we can have about what are we all going to do to become more engaged um, in the federal elections that are coming up. Thank you. So, as like we mentioned, we're going to open up to the audience now to uh, participate in this discussion. So our panelists did offer some great options and strategies to connect with your, polit your political party or your politician, whoever's riding, whoever's running in your riding. And um, so we'd like to ask the audience, uh, if it's okay, you can just stand up and then you can just speak, or and I'm going to try to repeat it on the microphone, that way everyone can hear it and we can capture it as well. So. Yep. Another question we have? Yeah. Um, so this is a two part question. Uh, the first one is for Arjun. Um, and, and where did your where did your passion for change come from? Um, and the second question is how were you able to bring value to um, this whole process with the TYC? Uh, sure. So my passion really stems from this is on the user. Yep. Sweet. Um, my passion, I don't know really, um, I guess it's just something that you see, you see issues and you kind of want to change them and it started definitely in school, it started in elementary school and I remember the summer of grade 7 before I went to grade 8, I made a list of things in my school that I remembered that I didn't like last year. So that was like not having this club, not having this club, and this club not being accessible to everyone. And I remember telling my mom about it and she was like, okay, so what you should do on the first day is go talk to the teachers and see who can supervise and help you do this. And the first week of grade 8, I remember just having all these clubs and doing it all. And after you saw that, by talking to the right people, you can make the change happen quite fi uh, quite quickly. So at the start of this year, um, so at the start of that year, I, I made quite a few clubs. And I started the environmental club at that school. And by the end of the year, uh, there's a for those of you in the TDSB who might know, there's a way that you can rate your school to see how environmentally friendly it is uh, compared to other schools. And it's called Eco Schools. And they're a third party organization that rates it. And it was our first year getting into that Eco Schools ro uh, realm and, and being rated. And uh, we actually got the platinum status that year, which was the highest uh, status uh, in, in their uh, ranking system. And only about three schools in the TDSB had that status at that time. And so that's how I realized that if you talk to the right people and you have uh, everyone in the room telling you great ideas, you can make change happen. And then uh, that stemmed outside of just school and into my community to see that if you talk to the right people, you can make the right things happen and they happen pretty fast. So that's where my passions probably stem from, just seeing issues and wanting them to be uh, fixed. Uh, sorry, the next question was value. Yeah, so one of the issues that we have as Yeah, and I know there's a few others in the room, mm -hmm. is bringing value to the system um, for young people, mm -hmm. getting them out to vote. And so as a young person yourself, where did that, where did that come from? Where did that passion to actually go out and vote? Where did, where did that come from? Well, yeah, so I'll be completely honest, full disclosure, I'm not of the age to vote yet. Um, but, so I have not voted yet, but, um, <laughs> but I do uh, motivate everyone else to vote. And it goes back to, uh, it, people complain every single day, and, they, and you make your own lunches the way I see it. And so all of my friends that are of age, they always complain about something like, oh, this TTC bus always comes late. And it's like, okay, then do something about it. Let's go to that TTC riders meeting, let's go to that panel meeting, and let's talk to the right people to make something happen. And uh, really, the way that we try to do it with the TYC is the same kind of uh, aspect in, in making it happen. So if you come to a consultation and you want, then you have a project in your head that you think that you need support with in trying to do something, the TYC has the right groups and the right people that you can come under the TYC's branch and we'll connect you with the right people and we'll make that happen. And so um, 
one of the things we're trying to do right now is advocating for transit. And just a couple weeks ago, we had a meeting with the uh, chief of staff of Mayor, uh, sorry, not Mayor, of uh, TTC CEO, uh, Andy Byford. And so we're planning a process with the TTC currently right now on how to develop advocacy strategies. So right now, the way the TTC plans routes in your local communities, it's density based. So the amount of people that live in an area determines how many st stops it gets and where the stops are. But that leaves out the entire humanizing aspect of the, here's where I live and maybe this doesn't serve your target or this doesn't serve your density target but here's the issue that it makes for me every single day and we want to bring that humanizing aspect into it and and all and the reason we're trying to do with the TYC first is because uh, youth primarily use TTC as their main form of transport and I know I do personally and so we're trying to get those uh, groundwork relationships built in currently to, to show youth that your voice is not just coming to the meeting and talking to us about it, it's actually talking to the right people about it. What about cost recreation programs? So historically the cabinet has, uh, has advocated for recreation programs and you'll notice that, and some of the YALs can probably understand this, a lot of the recreation um, facilities that the city's making in the last probably 10 years or so, they're great facilities, they operate very well, but they're open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and youth are in school from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So one of, the things, uh, one of the things that the TYC has historically advocated for is making recreational programs um, more accessible and making them from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. and then that becomes an issue for people who need them during the day as well. So we have tried to target that and uh, we are still in the process, uh, wheels turn slowly with things like that because they are serving different demographics and not just youth. But um, it is something that we are advocating for constantly. Get together with adults. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Arjun. So just to 